Hello guys, welcome to our channel once again. In today's video on our jam chemistry exam revision series, we have the these 10 jam repeated questions to answer on the topic electrolysis. So guys, this video will be all about electrolytes and non-electrolytes. So in short to stay till the end of this video. Also, if at any point you want to answer any question here in this video, you can pause the video and try out to see if you can get the answer to the question even before we provide the answer thereafter. So let's start with the first question here. It says, as the concentration of an electrolyte reduces, the conductivity A is unaffected, B increases, C reduces to zero, D decreases. So guys, the answer to this question is option D and that decreases. When the concentration of the electrolyte is reduces, the conductivity will decrease too. So that's the answer to this question. Let's consider the next question. Question number two, it says, the conductivity of an electrolyte increase as its concentration A increase, B is unaffected, C reduces to zero, D decreases. So guys, the answer to this question is option A and that increases. The conductivity of an electrolyte increases as its concentration also increases. So let's consider the next question. Question number three here says, the solution that will conduct the higher amount of electrolytes is a 0.5 mole per dm cube of hydrochloric acid b 2.0 moles per dm cube of ethanoic acid c 2.0 mole per dm cube of hydrochloric acid d 0.5 mole per dm cube of ethanoic acid so guys the answer to this question is option c here that's 2.0 moles per dm cube of hydrochloric acid. So we have to consider that here we have 2.0 moles per dm cube, which means the concentration is high. So you might be wondering as well, why are we not picking 2.0 moles of ethanoic acid since the concentration is same as that of the hydrochloric acid here, which is 2.0. Another thing is the fact that hydrochloric acid conducts more in aqueous solution than ethanoic acid. So guys, that's it for this question. So let's quickly go to the next question. Question number four here, it says, the process of electrolysis of brine produces chlorine gas at which electrode a cathode b negative electrode c positive electrode d anode so guys the answer to this question is option d here and that's the anode the process of electrolysis of brine produces chlorine gas at the anode so in this process the chloride ions are oxidized at the anode to form chlorine gas so that's it for that question let's consider the next question question number five here it says which of the following substances will decompose when an electric current is passed through it a copper rod b tetroxus of acid solution c methylated spirits d sucrose solution so guys the answer to this question is option b here tetroxus of acid solution so that's the substance that would decompose when an electrolytic current is passed through it. And that's because it's the only electrolyte here out of all the options here. So remember that an electrolyte decomposes when an electric current is passed through it. So guys, that's it for that question. Let's consider the next question. Question number six here. It says, anions move towards the anode and cations move towards the a proton b anode c electron d cathode so guys the answer to this question is option d here and that's the cathode anions move towards the anode and cations move towards the cathode so guys that's it for that question so let's consider the next question question number seven it says a concentrated solution containing hydrogen ion, copper ion, hydroxide ion, and chloride ion 
was electrolyzed using platinum electrodes. The ion that will be discharged at the cathode is A. Hydroxyl ion B. Hydrogen ion C. Copper ion and D. Chloride ion. So guys, the answer to this question is option C here yeah, and that's copper ion. In electrolysis, the ion that will be discharged at the cathode is the cation, which is the positively charged ion. So in this case, the cation is the copper here. And since the cathode is negatively charged, it will attract this positive ion, which is the copper, and then gain electrons from the copper metal. So that's it for that question. Let's consider the next question, guys. Question number eight, it says, electrolytes in the dry Leyland cell is A, anhydrous zinc tetrazo surface, B, ammonium chloride paste, C, muslin bag, and D, pasty manganese 4 oxide. So guys, the answer to this question will be ammonium chloride paste. The electrolytes in the dry Leyland cell is an ammonium chloride solution, which is actually in a paste form. So that's it for that question. So let's consider the next question, guys. Question number nine. The question here says, which of the following is not an example of weak electrolytes? A. Ethanoic acid. B. Ammonia solution. C. Pyridine. And D. Potassium bromide. So guys, the answer to this question is option D here. And that's potassium bromide. Actually, weak, weak electrolytes are substances that particularly ionize in solution meaning they produce relatively few ions. Examples will include weak acids like ethanoic acid, weak bases like ammonia and pyridine, and so on. So guys, however, the potassium bromide is a strong electrolyte because it completely ionizes in solution producing large number of ions so that's not an example of a weak electrolyte so that's the answer to this question option d so lastly guys let's consider the next question here question number 10 and it says the acid used in electrolysis of water is dilute a nitric acid b ethanoic acid c hydrochloric acid d sulfuric acid so guys, the answer to this question is option D here, and that's the dilute sulfuric acid. Actually, sulfuric acid, well, actually, dilute sulfuric acid is the acid used in the electrolysis of water. So electrolysis of water actually involves the decomposition of water into oxygen and hydrogen gas due to electric current being passed through the water. So that's it, guys, for that question. And this will be the end of this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not yet a subscriber. Also, if you have any specific question regarding this video, you can drop your question on the comment section below and we'll ensure to give you a response. So guys, we also want to use this opportunity to encourage you to join our YouTube channel community by hitting the join button below in order to become a member of this channel community. So guys, it's very important you do so, so that you can be able to gain access to all our premium information on JAMP updates. So this will help you even as you prepare for your JAMP examination. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you once again for watching this video. See you on the next one.